On this week's Service Screen Report, we're stopping by the annual blood drive, traveling to Harbison West to meet an award-winning author, Websites and highlighting and our school's diverse that. population. Good afternoon, Dutch Fork. Today is Friday, March 15th, and your Silver Screen Report starts now. The small gym was filled with nurses and needles Tuesday as the Red Cross held its annual blood drive. Kylie Fine was there. On Tuesday, the annual blood drive was held in the small gym where students and staff gathered to donate their blood to help those in need. There was just a need for it, I guess. So I just want to help out any way I can. Because like, I know a lot of people who like did it in the past or whatever, and then I walked in here and she was like, oh, you can do it, so I was like, okay. I wanted to donate because it's a good cause. Those who wish to donate blood are encouraged to eat a well-balanced meal and drink plenty of water. Uh, drink lots of water, I think. That's what my mom told me at least. Um, and then eat breakfast. Drink a lot of water before you come here. Eat breakfast. Uh, uh, don't, don't be afraid of the needles, but I also recommend not looking at it, because I sure didn't. It's less painful than what I thought it would be, so it's easy. If you wish to donate blood, then it is required to be at least 16 years old with parental consent and be a minimum weight of 110 pounds. This has been Kylie Fine with your Silver Screen Report. Last Thursday, students from Harbison West Elementary gathered together to see Newbery Award winning author and illustrator Cece Bell. Max Franks has the story. C.C. Bell, an author in the Midlands area, went to Harbison West Elementary School to speak with students about her published works and impaired hearing. Every obstacle is simply trying to um, follow a conversation and um, figure out what's going on. I did a lot of lip reading and that sort of thing. But that's the number one thing, is like trying to follow a conversation or what people are saying and also um, trying not to feel left out. Because of her hearing impairment, Belle wrote her famous memoir, El Defo, and from there her works highlighted the traits that make people different. I hope that hearing kids who read it will maybe um, become more empathetic about um, what it's like to talk to deaf kids or you know adults who are deaf or their grandparents who might be losing their hearing and to be kinder about how they communicate. Kids who are deaf or hard of hearing who read it, I hope they read it and they're like, oh, there's somebody else like me. It's good for kids to know that everybody is different in some way. I always thought that deaf people just like couldn't hear and were in hopeless abyss of life. But I've actually learned a lot that they're their own individuals. Bell has written nearly a dozen books and won the Newbery Medal of Honor and Eisner Award for El Defo. She and creative writing student Faith Udako share their writing process. My process is generally I write the story first and I try to get that as good as I can and then I go into the pictures and it's a, it's a pretty slow process for me. If it's a picture book, I'll do the whole book on one piece of paper, kind of like storyboarding in the movies. And then you keep going back and forth between the pictures and the words until it all kind of comes together. When I have to write, I usually like take a minute to kind of like just think about what exactly I'm supposed to write, but then kind of just jump into it. Like I don't really believe in like outlining like what I'm going to write or anything. I just like take the first idea that comes to my head and just start writing. Bell's new book, You Loves You, comes out November this year. If you're at all interested in writing, Dutch Fork offers the creative writing elective. This has been Max Franks with your Silver Screen Report. For this week's Kids in the Hall, we asked students about their favorite graphic novels. My favorite graphic novel is Naruto because of the action in it. I find it good. My favorite graphic novel is called War Stories. Um, it's by this guy named Garth Ennis. And I like it it's just because I'm, I'm really into military history. My favorite comic book will be Diary of a Wimpy Kid. And the reason why is Greg is pretty. My favorite graphic novel would be 
the Full Metal Alchemist series because you have two brothers who are focused on trying to bring their mom back from the dead. The next chapter of the Marvel Cinematic Universe premiered last Friday. Did the film live up to its expectations? Mason Barr has the answer. Captain Marvel is the 21st film to be introduced into the ever-growing Marvel Cinematic Universe, which has yet to become a tiresome experience. But does the latest installment live up to the high expectations Marvel has set for itself? Captain Marvel brings new fun characters to the universe, but doesn't bring enough depth for them to become very engaging, including Captain Marvel herself. Although the film's story is pretty good, it doesn't really have anything too special about it that makes it stick out other than a few plot twists. Captain Marvel, played by Brie Larson, and Samuel L. Jackson's Nick Fury both have very great chemistry with each other, and together bring a lot of enjoyment to the film. Truth be told, I was ready to hang it up till I met you today. So you're not from around here. It's hard to explain. I keep having these memories. I see flashes. Larson and Jackson both do a great job acting, even though the fans were worried that Larson's acting wouldn't be very good based on the trailers. The shaky camera work during some of the action scenes made it difficult to follow what was happening, but when the camera was steady, the action scenes were good. Overall, the film was a good addition to the Marvel Universe, even though it does have some flaws like the unsteady camera work and the lack of characterization. For these reasons, Captain Marvel scores a 7 out of 10. This is with Mason Barr with your Silver Screen Report. Student Council has decided to make Dutch Fork more aware of its diverse population. Here's Solomon Dix with more. Student Council got together to create a chart to show Dutch Fork's diversity and what makes the school unique. So we wanted to figure out who we are and who we, who our staff is and how we can use that to make reach out to more people. It was something that our president wanted to do and in general the whole club because our school is so diverse so we wanted to talk more about it and so everyone can know about it. Student Council accounted for every student in staff's diverse ethnicity and built a school profile based on the data they collected. Um, so we had a couple people looking up statistics and then we had people in the library classroom like looking up uh, translations for the like sentence like what makes Dutch work Dutch work. And so, um, and then we had people actually making the signs. So hitting with signs and through the multimedia different social platforms and everything was really, really important. Well, first we had to look at like our report cards and our statistics on websites and stuff that have that. And then we just came up with a plan to what kind of signs we were going to have. Student council members say the variety of staff and students gives awareness of fellowship at Dutch Fork knowing that no one is alone. I feel like it's kind of eye-opening to a lot of kids at our school that it's you are part of this big student body of people and it's able to kind of show everybody that you're not alone, everybody is unique, but you also have people that you can identify with. I think it brings more awareness to it and also something that we should talk more about because one of the main reasons I chose to come to Dutch Fork was the diversity. It our differences bring us together. This has been Solomon Dix with your Silver Screen Report. The SAT word of the week is constituent, a noun meaning an essential part. The school parking lot has rules and regulations everyone must follow in order to keep students safe. Ryan Brabham has the scoop. Driving and parking at school is an activity that high school students say they look forward to. I don't really see that many. I guess there are a few wrecks and then I guess trash, but other than that, it's a, it's a good parking lot. Students not wearing seat belts, students speeding and students not knowing how to park their cars. People just don't have any regards for anyone else and they just drive like maniacs. They try to move spots and they try to park in a spot that's not assigned to them. We have some people who try to drive to school without purchasing a spot um, and park in somebody else's spot. Those are probably the two biggest things that happen. Also. What is becoming a problem is people coming into the parking lot late and then therefore being targeted the first block. For this reason, safety is a mandatory precaution because issues may be frequent. A right turn lane and a left turn lane as well as a entrance for if you're coming back to school to like pick up friends when the bell rings. A double lane turning into the school or let people come through the, um, through the front of the school by the gate. Everybody should have to learn how to park in the correct spot and learn how to use the different lanes correctly. Student and staff suggest how traffic flow may improve. Pay attention to my surroundings. Make sure you look, look everywhere, just everywhere. I don't text and drive, and I make sure I 
make sure I'm always aware of my surroundings. Wear your seatbelt, pay attention on the road, and like don't mess with your friends. This has been Ryan Brown with the Silver Screen Report. Today is Administrator Sig Tanner's last day. Former Spring Valley Principal Jim Childers will take his place until the end of the year. We caught up with Mr. Childers yesterday to talk about his expectations for the remainder of the year. I'm a retired uh, teacher, coach, and administrator from Spring Valley High School in the last 20 years. Um, I was uh, involved with uh, basketball coach. I was a biology teacher. Um, I've been in education all my life, so I was at the um, high school level and uh, at the university level for 10 years. Well, what they can expect from me is somebody who will treat them with dignity and respect, uh, friendly, and, but uh, somebody who will, uh, is a hard worker and, and uh, wants to meet people and, and uh, learn all, about all the activities here at Dutch Fork. Dutch Fork has a um, history of, and a tradition of excellence in athletics and academics, and so that's one good thing. It's got an excellent reputation and had great leadership through the years. Dr. Owens, who was here, the last principal, was, I worked with him for 14 years at Spring Valley, and, and Dr. Gary I've known for about that long, too, and there's two wonderful leaders that uh, I'd be you know, proud to work with. I guess, you know, if with my athletic background, I'm, I'll be checking up on all of your uh, athletic activities and, and uh, all the extracurricular activities. I was involved in that at Spring Valley, and um, I'm looking forward to meeting the students, the teachers and staff, and uh, hopefully uh, providing a service for them also. Now for some announcements. A representative from Winthrop University will be on campus Monday at 12.50 p.m. Sign up in the school counseling office. The Dutch Fork cheerleading team will hold tryouts next Wednesday in the Health Science Building presentation room. Returning cheerleaders will meet up at 4.30 and those wishing to try out for the first time will meet at 6 p.m. See Coach Lauren Gare in room 206 for more information. Now here's Allie with more. Thanks, Lydia. The Dutch Fork High School Community Book Club will meet in room 257 during Fox Focus next Thursday to discuss Bonnie Sue Hitchcock's award-winning novel, The Smell of Other People's Houses. There will be snacks. The Future Business Leader of America will meet during Fox Focus Wednesday, March 27th. See sponsor Sandra Smith in room 104 for more information. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week.